You want precision cutting in your garage or home office, but CNC machines are expensive and complicated. That's why I'm gonna show you how building your own is fun and 100% doable. You might think building CNC machines is just for tech experts, but actually anyone can do it. Today we'll break it down and I'll guide you through what parts you need exactly step by step. So by the end of this, you'll feel confident and avoid most of the mistakes that beginners make. So you've browsed online for CNC parts, but the options felt overwhelming. Let's simplify. First of all, we've got to think about the frame. Aluminium extrusions are great for mid-range machines cutting hardwoods and aluminiums. A steel frame offers maximum rigidity for the metal cutting. In my own build, I used a full steel frame made from thick boilerplate and epoxy filled box sections. Next is motors. Stepper motors are affordable, but they don't have feedback. Closed loop stepper motors are better because they fix mistakes in real time with encoders. But if you really want precision, go with servo motors. These are one horsepower servo motors that I picked for my build and they have encoders. Ultimate in precision and speed. Open loop stepper motors have a driver, but no encoder signals. Closed loop stepper motors and servo drivers have encoder signals to keep track of positioning. For linear motion, I went with 25 mil rails for maximum rigidity. Don't skimp here, round rails are cheap, but they just won't hold up for accurate cutting. Unless you're building a laser cutter or a plasma cutter, I wouldn't go with anything other than the linear rails that I showed you on my machine. So let's talk spindles. Little handheld routers are good for a start to cut wood and aluminium. Then you can step up to an all-in-one spindle for a bit more power. These spindles have variable frequency drives so you can control the speed from your control software. We will talk about that later in the video. But I installed the BT30 automatic tool change spindle on my machine for serious cutting and and future proofing. It's rigid enough for cutting steel and saves me time with tool swaps. I'm even running a tool change button through Mark IV so that I can just press the button and put the tool in. Next up, how do we make it move? We can use belts, we can use lead screws. Both of these are good options. Belts you'd use for a more lightweight machine, plasma cutters and uh, laser cutters. Something like this lead screw you could use for a 3D printer or potentially a router um, Z-axis. If you want ultimate precision, speed and accuracy, minimal backlash, ball screws are the way to go. Lastly, your controller board. It brings it all together. It's the brains of the operation. It reads all the inputs and sends all the outputs from the PC. There are really cheap options from AliExpress for $5 and then you've got your more expensive options from the likes of CNC for PC which I highly recommend. So now you've got all your parts but assembly can seem intimidating. Start with your frame, make sure it's as square and as rigid as possible. I welded mine using a careful sequence to avoid warping. It takes patience but it pays off. Install linear rails with a dial indicator or straight edge to align everything. Mount motors and spindles securely. Use the best couplers you can afford and double check your alignment. Now it's wiring time. Don't be afraid to follow diagrams here. I learned the hard way. Read every detail. If you're wiring 240 volt or 110, don't guess, get advice. Final step, basic electrical checks. Power it up carefully and hope there's no magical smoke. CNC machines need two types of software called CAD and CAM for design and the controller software's motion. Fusion 360 is my go-to. It's powerful and it's easy to learn. FreeCAD is a solid free alternative with loads of tutorials on YouTube. For motion control, I run Mark IV. It's highly customizable. I even mapped a hardware button to run my ATC spindles ear ram to make it easier to put tools in and out of the machine. Linux CNC is open source and powerful, but has a learning curve. You'll need to learn some config files and a bit of coding. Masso and Acorn are plug and play options they're easier to set up but a bit pricey so there you have it with that new information i hope that's helped you out a bit and you can go and build your own cnc machine at home as you can see i've built my mill it works and there's more videos to come so make sure you subscribe leave a comment down below and let me know what you're going to build see ya